Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending where you are. Might even be good evening in some places. Uh, Dan on here, Dan here with uh, John and Robin, and welcome to the Designer Show. So today we're going to have some fun talking about how we come up with ideas for our projects. So um, uh, we'll have a good time with that. We're still waiting for Kevin to show up. I know he was looking for the link to join us, and I may have to pop off here for a minute and resend it to him. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we'll get started in just a second. I do want to uh, quickly uh, share something with you about the course that we've got going right now. Robin, you were just telling me a few seconds ago that you really got a lot of information out of the course we did yesterday. Um, what, what kind of things uh, hit home with you? Oh, I have my little notebook right here. So let me just kind of say, um, you know, I'm not really good with stairs. So <laughs> you, you talked a lot about stairs yesterday, which was uh -huh. really incredibly helpful. And, um, and understanding some of the new things, you know, Chief changes constantly and it's learning all the new details that are happening with it. So the, um, some of the opportunities that you can do by group selecting rooms. So you could change ceiling heights all at one time, which wasn't available previously and now it is. It's like yeah. those little things. Dan, you spend so much time. For those of you who don't know, Dan goes through every single button. He knows what every button does. And he finds these little tricks that you go, oh, I didn't know what that was for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the little pin when you copy something. The little pin. You should show this. This is, you guys, this is like my favorite tool now, that little pin. Oh, yeah. You don't have to go click copy every time. You just hit the push pin and uh, it, it locks it in. Yeah, I'm I don't I'm not very adventurous where I try all the buttons and Dan nah. tries all the buttons. So if you haven't used it, you've There's got problems. to um, you've got to try them all out. So anyway, coming every time Dan, every time you talk, I learn something new. Cool. Well, yeah. good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. So, uh, again, the uh, registration's open for the designer show that we've got going right now. It's twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, uh, all the courses we've done so far are recorded and online, and uh, you guys can have at it. So, uh, all right. Let me just get out of there. And, Kevin, welcome. Well, thank you. You found the link? I did. did. a boy. Atta boy. I'm there. Hi, everybody. I see you're sitting out on your new ironwood deck that you built. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah my, my little paradise. Oh, man. It looks like it, too. You got palm trees. Are you sure you're not, you're not in Hawaii? <laughs> it's cold here in Hawaii. It, yeah, Kansas, Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> anyway, welcome. All right. So today we're going to, again, just go through a few things uh, of how we get work with our uh, with our chief architect software and other ways that we come up with to uh, conceptualize some of the things that we're we're going to do. I'm going to start first um, and show you what I like to do on certain projects. Um, I've never been great with sketching things on paper as far as 3D. I mean, I, I kind of rough it out sometimes, but eh, not so much. So here's what I do. All right. Um, okay, I'm a 12.05. So I got about 10, 10, 15 minutes. So I'm going to show you a project that I did um, a few years ago um, in a little town here called Wayzata, where uh, it, it's a nice little town. This is a little house in a very nice neighborhood that they were going to do a little remodeling to. In fact, they're going to do a lot of remodeling too. So this is what it ended up looking like when we were done. Uh, so very small lot. Uh, so we didn't have a lot of room to work with on the edges. And in, in the course of creating this, let me show you a couple of the things. Let me see if I can find those pictures. Here's the before and afters of that property. I don't get a lot of afters of my projects, but this one I did happen to go by and see. It, it did a real nice job, and it came out very nice. So uh, in a neighborhood like this, they stuck a lot of money into that building. And it paid off for them in a big way uh, in the housing market that we're in. So uh, it really turned out nice. You see this a lot in, the in, in many cities where they'll take a little dumpy house. And in this case, they didn't even tear it down. We worked with the existing structure and added to it, believe it or not. Probably would have been easier to tear it down. Um, so uh, what, what we were doing, we, we had lots of uh, 
challenges with this because of the small size of the lot. And what I like to do sometimes is use colored boxes to help me move rooms around and lay them out. So like some architects will draw circles on a bailiwick and things like that. I like to use colored boxes. Let me show you how I do that. Uh, before I do that, um, I started with this. Okay, we had very little room to work with on, on the terrain. And so we had to be careful with that. And, and we also had square footage uh, restrictions. We could only go to a certain amount of square footage of coverage on the lot, which you see a lot in, in many projects. So uh, we started with this kind of maximizing a footprint that we thought could work well with a few basic ideas in mind. So uh, this is where the existing garage was. Well, we thought, okay, let's make a carport and we'll do a detached garage. Didn't have room for an attached garage. No room to maneuver cars to make it work. So we had to go detached, which actually worked out really nice because we got a nice two car garage in there. This was about the existing layout, which was a little bit of this was part of the existing too. And so then we're going to go to an addition. So we uh, uh, started with that. And from there, we started then working uh, on ideas on where to put the things within the project. And rather than drawing lots of walls, and, and uh, let me get to the right one here. Uh, what I like to do is I'll start out with colored boxes. And we kind of define what we want in the project. You know, we wanted a porch, we wanted an office, a living room. Uh, we wanted a bathroom on the main level. Uh, uh, the de design, the contractor I was working with said, yeah, we've got to have a pantry, kitchen, dining. Okay, so we started laying those out. And then we, we were going to add a second level as well. Okay, so we started working with ideas about, well, how many bedrooms? We're going to do a master suite. Uh, we're going to do a master suite. Okay, Kevin, is that your guy? That is my guy. <laughs> Put a bullet in it. Oh, don't do that. Put a treat in its mouth. Uh, <clears throat> so we went upstairs and we started laying out boxes here. And again, um, I didn't add the walls to after I had a lot of the boxes in place. Well, this was kind of rev one where we got and going to it and we went, eh, nah, we didn't like that so much. And so we started playing with some other ideas. Anyway, the the, the way it ended up. Uh, turned out quite nice. We ended up with a layout like this. We ended up extending a bedroom out over some of the carport. We had to. We could only go this far because of the 10 foot setback for a living area. All right. That included the second floor. Uh, so we had to keep all that stuff in mind. This is what we ended up with. Uh, we put a play area here at the top of the steps, bedroom, bedroom, bedroom. So we still ended up with the same amount of, of types of rooms that we had here, but we just repositioned them a, uh, a bit. So how I do that is I have, and I've done this on a lot of other projects too, where we aren't exactly sure what we're going to put in the project. So I, I created a little library of um, that I made up uh, of these boxes, I guess you'd want to call them just CAD boxes. So um, let me go find them real quick. And where did I put them? Okay. I know I've got them here somewhere. I didn't go find those before we started here. Uh, okay. Come on, Dan. Here they are. Room layout boxes. So I, I just created a bunch of colored boxes. And I went into the label for the box. And I labeled the different kinds of rooms that we have that I have in my chief architect room dialogue. Come on. Um, okay, not that good yet either. Tab key. All right, so under the room names here, I just made a bunch of boxes to match all the room names I have on my list. All right. And then what I would do is I created that new group. So I just grouped it together. Let me ungroup it here. And then what I like to do with some of these projects is as I'm working with clients <clears throat> on bigger projects, I don't use this on little projects. Uh, that's 
you just don't need this kind of stuff. But it takes a yeah, we want to have a porch. Uh, yeah, we want to have a half bath on the main level and we want to have a master bath up in the master bedroom. So I'll just start pulling these out. Yeah, I'm going to we're going to do a master bedroom. We're going to do a uh, uh, we want to have two other bedrooms. Right. So I'll put in two other bedrooms. So I just kind of grab these boxes. And then what I will do is we'll say, well, OK, so we've got these spaces. You know, we want we know we want to have a porch in the front of the building. We want to have a master bedroom, probably toward the back, because that's kind of where uh, we thought it would work best, just, uh, you know, initially. And then we want to have some bedrooms near the front. So we start moving these around. Then I would start shaping the boxes to kind of fit within the parameter that I have set up with those plot lines. So I might, you know, the cool thing about using boxes like this, I, all I have to do is hit my number three key and I can break them. I can start, you know, reshaping them. I can make them different sizes. I can do whatever I want with them. I can't convert these to rooms. I don't use it for that. All I do is use these boxes to kind of help guide me where I'm going to start putting things within my plan. And so again, like down here, you can see it's still real rough yet. I haven't started putting in the walls. And actually, we ended up uh, moving the stairway over back to its original location anyway. So we didn't even do that. I can't find the plan where I had made those revisions. So <laughs> I'm not going to show you that one. So anyway, that, that's a little bit about how I do it. it it's, it's simple, it's silly, and it works. And um, I've been using, I didn't even realize I've been using CAD boxes for a very long time to do this. Uh, but I kind of formalized it by creating all these colored boxes. And it just uh, makes it real easy to see what's going on in the plan. I also do that uh, to, with kitchens sometimes, too. I'll take and, uh, you know, I have some boxes here. And, you know, so if I got a room defined, I'll, I'll grab my kitchen box here. Uh, I might take this and I'll, you know, I get about about the size of room I want. And I say, well, you know, we're, we're going to put the sink about there. We're probably going to put a fridge, you know, over here. So I use these in the room to start laying out the... Uh, where some of the things go in the kitchen and, you know, lay out some cabinets and, you know, again, it's all 2D CAD boxes. There's nothing special going on here. It's just a way to organize thoughts. And that's what I do. Any questions? Anybody got any comments about that? No, it's back to the way we learned in school. It's like bubble diagram. Exactly. Yeah. Trouble is, I never went to school so for that, so I didn't know that. I didn't know what the, what bubble diagrams were. Uh, I do now, but I didn't back in the day. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, where do I get my colored boxes? I created them. Um, uh, actually, I could probably share this library with you guys. Um, uh, I'll send. I'll post it online somewhere. The uh, uh, all I did was I, you know, you, you draw a CAD box. I made them all the same exact size and I opened its dialogue. I put a, uh, a fill style in solid pattern. I gave it, I like to give it, you know, a bit of transparency. I typically do that with all my boxes. And, you know, in some of the cases I just use chief standard colors and others I used, um, I created extra colors that I used. And then under label, you could put in a specific label. In this case, I called it a, you know, uh, I'll call it a kitchen. Okay, so that's my label for that thing. And then what I in did is I inserted a, uh, a object specific and I put in area. Okay, because I wanted to know how many square feet this box has in it. So there's my label for that. And lo and behold, it worked pretty well. So uh, that's all I did. I just created a whole bunch of those, put different colors in them. And then I kind of just drag them around on the screen as I use them. Again, I don't use it on smaller projects, but I do use it on bigger projects with a lot of stuff going on. All right. Um, Great idea. Okay. What do we got? So, Dan, why do you use those boxes instead of using the, the thing? Why do you use that instead of what comes with Chief? Well, let's let John show you what he does. Okay. Because he does use the things that come with Chief. So John, I'll, why don't I'll I? I'll convince him to change his mind how he does that. Is that? 
Well, the main reason I don't use the things that come with Chief is because with Chief, you're, you're stuck with a rectangle. You, you can't are. you yep. can't make it a different size or shape. And I don't even know that you can rotate it. So if yeah, I want you to can do, rotate them. Can you rotate them now? Okay. Pretty sure, yeah. So, but if I could make those things different shapes, yeah, I'd, I'd maybe use it. Anyway. It might not be pretty colors, right, John? No, well, they That's have pretty true. colors too. Okay. All right, John, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and let's take okay. a look at what you've got. Um, have you tried making the cat okay. box approximate sized? Um, no, I haven't. That's actually a really good idea, Vicki. You guys see my screen? No, nope. you got to hit the share screen on the bottom toolbar there. Okay, hang on a second. I did that. Then, then I have to add you to the add okay. your screen to the. So I'm to the point where it's saying entire screen or cancel. Do you you didn't get a screen that says what screen to share? Um, Are you on multiple there screens? We there we go. Nice. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. So I add that to All the right. stream. There we go. So now can you see there. my screen. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I, a lot of times when I'm using the chief space planning tools, I will use a, um, I'm doing it with a new plan. So what I might do is I, I'm working on a project right now that I have a footprint of 30 by 75. So I might put in here um, uh, 75 feet and try to orient it in the way that I'm going to be drawing it. And so you feet. started with a CAD box. I'm start, this is my my perimeter. This is my building envelope space kind that I have available. Yeah, kind of the same thing I was doing with my terrain. Yeah. My, my, yep. yeah. Yep. And then I'll go up to tools and go to uh, space planning. And I'll click on space planning. And that's going to give me this dialogue here. It's gonna, I'm gonna just going to go to next here. And it's going to get this is going to give me the boxes that I want to use. So how many floors do I want? I'm going to have two floors. I'm going to have a basically a stall and a half garage. So I think I'll I'll just stick with the two stall garage. And I'm not going to have a second garage. I'm going to go to next. I'm going to put in I want one bedroom on the main floor, one full bath and a half bath on the main floor. I want an office den space, a formal dining room and a family room and a, no living room and a kitchen. Go to the next one. This is asking me how many extra closets I want. I don't think right now I want to put any in, so I'll say no there. I'm not going to have a front deck. I'm going to have a deck, but no front deck. Um, I'm going to have a laundry room, entryway, and hallway. Uh, and then next, how many bedrooms do I want on the second floor? I just want one up there. It's not even going to be a, really a bedroom. It's going to be kind of a loft area. And one bath I'm going to put up there. No half baths. And I'm not going to have any of this other stuff on the second floor. Go to next. How many extra closets? I don't want any extra closets. Um, none of that other stuff. And now I'm going to finish. And it's going to give me all my, all my, all my boxes here that I can use from that dialog. It's Another way all, to get the This for boxes. both floors. For right? both floors. Yeah, no, okay. it's, it's per... It's per floor. So it did create a second, second floor, floor. floor. All right, cool. Yep. So I got to try to get all this stuff into this space on this floor. Um, another way to get to these boxes while we're talking about how to get to the boxes is if you could just go to uh, tools and go to the space planning and click on one of these tools here, one of these rooms, it gives, and you have your, uh, you have to have your tool palette turned on. It gives you all of these over here too, that you can grab them as you go do they still have they don't have the space planning toolbar anymore do they they do well i don't know if they do an x13 i have it on mine but i migrated my toolbars so. oh that's true yeah um you can also turn these boxes on and off with this toggle tool right here if you want to get rid of them one thing i was trying to figure out let me just do this quick here i can change yeah i can change the i don't know if this will be global though what happens if you draw a wall on top of this? I just changed the trans. Well, it's not even showing it there. It must have done it in the wrong spot. 
that one's zero, and this one down here should be 75. There you go. Now I can see my walls underneath the box, but you can't right out of the box. So if I select all those at one time, I might be able to. So now you can click on a box and rotate it, right? Um, yes. Let me just uh, double check that. General. Although you could just change the, you know, the shape of it. Yeah, you can't, okay. you can't, you can't make it. Well, I guess you can't. No, you, you can't, can't put it at an off angle, I guess. Right. You can only change. That's, that's where I got lost with this tool right away. Is because, yeah. you know, if, if I was doing a straight up simple house, yeah, it could work fine. But I, I don't ever do that. <laughs> I always have right. angles and, you know, off shapes yeah. and things. But again, this is a good way but, to start organizing your thoughts. Absolutely. So it does have a limitation. So I want to, I'm going to put this garage over here on this end. And I'm going to, I want to put the bedroom, I'm going to put the bedroom up against the garage. Just because of things that we've talked about with the homeowner. And I can offset that if I want to, you know, just I need to stay inside my perimeter there. I'm going to put the family room. This is on a lake, so we're trying to get views to the lake. Um, put my dining room behind my family room here, my kitchen, my kitchen here. And... What else do I have here? I said an office. They just really want an office nook, so I'll just change the size of that to kind of try to throw that in there somewhere. An entryway. We want the entryway to come in between the kitchen and the dining room from what we've talked about. I might put a small deck out here on this side. This is actually, in Minnesota, it's kind of weird here. It's always a debate what you call the front. Is it the lake side or the road side? Um, and then we need some stairs going up to the second story. Might put them. We kind of want the second story to be accessible without going through the living space too. So I'm going to try to figure out how to get the stairs in this area right here coming off the garage. Um, I need to get my laundry and stuff in here. So I'm going to move all of this stuff over. Might put a screen porch in front of that. Hall. We've got a bath that we got to get in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to get this exactly right. where I want it. Yeah, just get some so, stuff in place. We we'll get the general get the idea. idea. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put the laundry here. So, Vicki, one of the reasons I don't have boxes sized kind of per room size. Usually when I'm working with those boxes, I'm working with an owner or someone that I'm designing for. And we'll discuss that as we're playing with the different boxes. Like, you know, what size bedroom you think in a small, medium, large uh, size bathroom, what size dining room. So then I'll make my adjustments at that point. Kind of like what John is doing right here. Just yep. making those And I'm just kind of tuning this up a little bit because once I get this get this all drawn here, kind of get, get these kind of things in place. There's a tool. So that's, that's basically the idea of using those boxes. You can place them, move them around, mm -hmm. you know, see how this might work. And then of course, before you do the next step, would it be wise to set your default ceiling heights? Yes, probably. Uh, no yeah, probably. And maybe your default wall exterior and interior wall types, because it would probably what you're about see to do that now, probably pick that up. So let's uh, go do that right now. Room, floors and rooms, floor levels, first floor. I'm going to stick with 109 and an eighth. Second floor, I'm going to stick with 97 and an eighth. And they could go change all your other framing and stuff like that too before you actually start building the house because I haven't built the house yet. Right. We'll go up to the second floor. Can you see floor reference? You can't see the floor reference when you're using these boxes. So that's kind of a drag. I wonder if you could turn that on in, is that a, are these reference, are these boxes on a layer? Oh yeah. So how do I get to that again? It's been a while. Uh, you got to go to, go to your layers, go, switch to um, the floor reference tool um, or layer set. Should be a floor reference set. Reference and then turn on display layer set. 
turn on just turn on everything and then turn on everything and see if it's there we won't bother looking for it right now okay either if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't there it is there it did so good job yeah, so it's on that list so it's on that list somewhere but now i can't right. select that now I, oh, i'm in the wrong layer set i'm running the wrong set oh yeah yeah now uh, just go, go here to... and then i can get back to where i was now it's hit your four, my four reference there we go there we go nice now you're going okay so now i can kind of put this kind of where i want it put the bath above the bath and i'm going to be done there i think and then i got this cool little magic button up here it's kind of magic it can kind of make a mess if you don't take time to get it all in place just go to space planning and build the house that didn't awesome. turn out too bad nice job john yeah okay, got my you, doors huh? in the wrong i think i think if you rotate if you figure out which side the door goes and you rotate those boxes in the right direction it'll put the door going out that okay. side that's got the well, rotate you, triangle on it print it and go build it man you're good and then uh <laughs> oh, let me let me just throw a roof on it here just for kicks uh yeah now the fun begins before we even look at it let's see what we get auto build roof okay yes i'll go ahead and turn it on there for now oh my god grab a camera and see what we got it's not bad yeah you can use a few windows yeah yeah maybe that's one thing it won't do it won't put windows in oh, okay yeah but it will put the doors in it'd be see highly it energy the door efficient in. house <laughs> yeah yeah yep all right cool anyway that's thanks what I john got. i like yeah. it it's awesome. nice it's a good tool for certain uh certain uh projects that yeah. can come in yep. handy to help you organize your thoughts all right robin it's your turn okay. uh how do you come so up with ideas? i mostly do kitchens and baths so i'm right. going to show you kind of how um i don't always work this way most of the time i can walk into a space and it you can see it right you kind of get an idea okay this is going to go there it's going to go there I, but if i have a complicated room a room that i'm just stumped with i am not going to spend all my time on the computer on it what i'll do is i'll do my as built no laughing you guys i actually teach my students to do this um, i teach at our local college and our younger our newer students people who are not really proficient in CAD, I don't want their lack of skills with the CAD program to get in the way of their designing, right? So what I want them to do is I'll tell them to print out, to do the, the as-built, put everything in place, and then um, print it out on paper, and then do this. So um, I will use, and I apologize, I just scanned this in, so it's not perfect. That's but what good. I'll do is I'll just put tracing paper over the top. And let me actually show you what it really looks like. Um, a lot of times this is what mine looks like. Oh, come on. Let me get, oh, you have to be on the right screen to get it to move to the next page. It's kind of crazy. Um, hang on a second, go back. Um, yeah, so this was me scribbling all over it. I'll just scribble and I'll um, work in pen. <laughs> So what I'll tell my students to do is to use tracing paper and use a pen, don't use erasers, because I don't want them to getting, I want them just doing what's called a brain dump, just throw all the crap out, all the good ideas, the bad ideas. If you don't like it, throw the paper on the floor and pick up a new piece of paper and trace over the top. So, um, and sometimes when I have a complicated space, I'll just start playing with it. This was a student design contest by the NKBA, and I'll, um, they give you a lot of parameters, a lot of rules, like all these things that you can and cannot do. So um, I was trying to get everything in. So I do it like this. And then once I feel like I have a design that I feel pretty comfortable with, then I'll go to CAD and I'll put it in place. And then this is what I came up with. So now I come up with a space that is functional and I can start putting my cabinets in place. So what I find by doing it like this, it allows me to be, especially when I have a, a, a space that's challenging to work in, then I'll, I can do a brain dump. And in fact, what I tell my students to do is to, um, um, 
to use to set a timer for exactly one hour and just draw and draw and draw and throw it on the floor and throw it on the floor and throw it on the floor and then leave it alone. Stop working after an hour. Don't keep um, don't keep working it. Um, I always feel that if you have a really challenging space and you spend too much time trying to figure it out, a lot of times you become more inspired when you leave it. So um, that's what I do. And that's a pretty quick way to do it, but that's kind of how I work. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And, and so as you're doing that, you know, so you, you've laid out the root, the walls in chief, so you've kind of got your space to work with. Yes. Um, then you print that and then you take some vellum or bailey work and you roll it out over the top of that uh, you say you know when you know this was the challenge that p the kids already had a lot of parameters how do you arrive you know where do you start with the parameters or you know you've already done a lot of interviewing of the client or you know yeah. so yeah so i when i'm meeting with clients it's the same thing i do a program right so i know you know, the client needs to have room for three people to be able to cook in and they, you know, want these kind of appliances and they want to be able to see this kind of a view or whatever it is. You know, they have to have the dogs being able to eat in the kitchen. Whatever all their requirements are, I make a list and then that's how I design from. Most of the time, I'm not doing it the way I just showed it on tracing paper because most of the time I'll walk into a room and I can see it. But if it's a room that's kind of challenging, then I will put it on tracing paper and draw that way. Now, mind you, I started designing back in 1992, actually earlier than that, 1989. Um, so I have been, I learned on paper and pencil. So paper and pencils is just, it's my friend. I like sketching and I like hand drawing and then putting it on CAD. I'm never going to give up CAD. I God, I love it. You know, it's yeah. like it makes me so much more efficient. But um, sometimes just the getting intimate with it and being paper and pencil is just so much nicer for my brain. And um, I enjoy it that way. It still works. Yeah. I mean, I, I still hear guys that draw, do all their plans on with the paper and pencil. Can't imagine. Yeah. But they do. And that's fine. It still works. Nothing wrong with it. It's worked for thousands of years. Um, yeah, you don't have to have an yeah. internet connection with paper and pencil. No, no, not really. <laughs> no. So, uh, so that's yeah. cool. What was that, that, Kevin? You do have to have a light bulb. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> or fire. Or yeah. a lot of candles. Or a lot of candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. So, again, very, very straightforward. You're just sketching. If you like it, you know, you maybe keep it and work, you know, take another sheet and kind of embellish that and then add more to that or at some point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I really do. I try to, um, and like I said, I don't do it on every one of my projects, but sometimes I just want to do it by paper and pencil. It just yeah. makes me happy. And I try to, um, and, and for people who are working on a room, that's something that they're not used to doing. Like I don't do whole houses. So if I'm doing a whole house design, it is on paper and pencil because yeah, I yeah. need to really see it and feel it. Yeah. Um, kitchens and baths, uh, but like I'm doing a master suite right now and it's a weird space. It's a super weird space. And we have that on paper and pencil as well. And then we'll put it on cat. Yeah. Again, whatever works. Yes. All right. Thanks, Robin. My All right. Pleasure. Kevin, Kevin Tranzo, uh, been a contractor for how many years? 21, 21 years. One and you've developed your business to a fairly uh, high, high end elite clientele. You do some pretty cool stuff. Thank you. Um, you've won lots of awards. Uh, what's your website again? Uh, chcdesignbuild.com. Yeah, so if you guys wanna see some amazing projects, check that out or your CHC design, CHC design build. Right, right. What, is it, what does that stand for again? Yeah. You know, when I started out, I had this grand idea that I was going to be a half-time cabinet maker and half-time remodeler. And it turns out you can't keep a cabinet shop open half-time, but the name of the company was, um, was Custom Home and Cabinet. So okay. See. So after a little while, when we decided the cabinet shop portion of it probably wasn't going to survive, 
everybody was calling us CHC anyway, so we just kept it. Rolling. There you go. It yeah. works. Anyway, so I met Kevin many years ago in, in Las Vegas. He came to my one of my first events uh, where we all stayed together and, and learned Chief and had, just had a ball. And I, I've, I've been following you ever since then, and we've become good friends. And, and I've you've always fascinated me with the types of projects you do and how you come up with the, these ideas. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you explain how you come up with ideas for your projects. Okay. So first of all, that uh, Robbins was a great segue that I want to try to remember a few bits and pieces as I roll into it. But one of the things that um, one of the, everybody has their different methods of going about a project. Some people walk in and they see the space and they start contorting the space. Um, they, they have then a, uh, they have then a boundary, their walls that they're working within, and uh, there's a particular list of criteria that they are trying to achieve. And that is a wonderful solution for that market. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What just happened? Did you lose me? Oh, we lost you for a second there. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Continue. So, so what I was saying was, is that uh, that there are all kinds of markets. My market tends to be one that is calling me in because uh, they don't know what they want and they want to discover what they want. They're looking for somebody who can help them do that. So it's a different way. It's a different um, it's a different interviewing process. Uh, I don't carry a tape measure. Um, I, I uh, walk in the door and talk to them about their world and their life and what they what they would like, how they would like to live that life if something were to happen there. And then that starts to develop the ideas. So what I'm saying is right off the bat, I, I draw outside the lines and um, and then I start to develop whatever I might be able to to satisfy their goal. So that's a very abstract way of looking at it, but it works that. To to um, to do that, I'm certainly not going to sit down with uh, CAD or pull a computer out and start working with it right off. So to Robin's point, I find that the um, both the inspiration that I get from the job site and the inspiration I get from the tactile feel of pencil on paper is um, uh, it, it kind of transfers me from uh, CAD designer to artist and back and forth. And I love that part of it. Um, so. I get my ideas and my sketches down on paper. So um, for me, uh, I think that the, the if I start to sketch out an idea, somebody's talking about something and I start to sketch out an idea, it may be just a component of it. It may be just a sink. It may be just something that they're talking about that then develops into something else. And then ultimately it ends up in CAD, but for the time being it's paper. So one of the coolest things that I have found in the last couple of years um, are, are paper-like tablets that I can use that allow me to do things like layering and uh, shading and sketching and things like that that are, that are actually digital. Um, I don't know how you go about sharing screens, how that magic happens, but uh, if you could switch me over to that. Um, you, you have to go to the bottom toolbar and you'll see a thing that says share. Okay. And then click that and then click screen. Share your screen. Kevin, are you using an iPad? I am not. What are you using? I'm using a, a remarkable pad. Oh yeah, and then do you use remarkable? And then can you use Procreate with it or not? I have never had sex with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Want to rephrase that <laughs> question? <laughs> so Procreate is a name of an app that people use on um, tablets. Artists will use it. It's called Procreate. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Keep, keep it clean, guys. <laughs> you, Kevin. That was helpful. <laughs> I, funny. <laughs> I can't I can't tell what you can see and what you can't see right um, now. I can't don't see, see your screen at all yet. You have to pick that button and then select which screen you want to show. And okay. Then, then I will share that screen with everybody. So I click that button and absolutely nothing happens. So um, you hit share. I did. And you're not on your phone, are you? I am not. Okay. So you hit sharing and 
you should, another screen should pop up that has. No, I got nothing. Are, are you on the remarkable tablet? I am on the remarkable tablet. And you're, and you're viewing to... the, you're not viewing this on the remarkable though. No, I'm trying to show you the remarkable tablet. Right. Is it plugged into your computer? Yes. Can you plug it into your computer? Yes. And okay. can you see it on your screen? On yes. your screen on your computer? Yes. Well, then, then it shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you there. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Well, then, I mean, then, then it should be able to show. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so, but nothing uh, happens when I hit the show button. So, uh, well, you want to, can you just hold your remarkable up in front of the camera? Okay, so uh, it looks like this. Yeah. So uh, the other thing is I, I had carpal tunnel surgery this morning, so my holding oh. up only works a little bit at a time. Oh, so, man. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Forgot right. right about that. So anyway, this is this is uh, this is the remarkable tablet. It's a it's a very nice tablet, but its cool, coolest factor is that it's effectively pencil on paper, and um, I can go to pick something from my remarkable tablet. If I can now get out of everything that I accidentally opened, um, I can pick something, and it might be something as simple as it might yeah, be simple as something um, here. And I'm just starting with a sketch of nothing, or. Uh, this is going to be tough because um, I only have one hand that works. Yeah. So, um, but I can do whatever I want to do on it. There's tilt, the, tilt your camera down a little bit more, Kevin. There you go. There okay. you go. That, that'll work. Okay. So uh, there you go. Perfect. So by doing this, I can, I, I have zero latency. I can use different pencil tips. I can uh, do anything I want. I can, I can come in here and, and erase, erase things that I, don't want and uh, erase big groups of things or small groups of things. And it's a very cool tablet. I also have layering. I also have uh, different pen types so that uh, whether I am doing something that is uh, pencil shaded or, or I'm doing something that is uh, uh, a marker or a paintbrush, you know, I have all the, all these different things that I can play with. So it allows me a lot of art, artistic, creative um, input to something, to a drawing that um, gives me the ability to get something down on paper in a hurry. So if I'm sitting in somebody's living room chatting with them about their world and what they think they might want, I might be sketching that world on here. Do you have any sketches on there that you could find that you could show us? I do. If I can get them tipped up in the right direction, yeah, we'd be good. So, I, love that. I love that, Kevin. I love that you're um, you're creating. It, the design is very organic. It is, and I love it that way. And it's, clients uh, really love seeing the fact that you know how to draw and that you're just creating. They're like, wow. So can you tilt your camera down again? Or, yeah. Oh okay. my goodness, John, go. it's fabulous. So this is just an idea. So I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do this fireplace for you, would it be something like this where I'm going to, uh, you know, I have this feeling that you've got an idea that you might like to have this, this arch put into the fireplace. So I'm going to do that. And then just as easily through layering, I can pull that off of there and, uh, and bring it back to, to uh, the same fireplace, except drawn in, uh, you know, a square so I can shade and draw and give and whatever. Um, and then we can tweak it through the racing and the layering and I can add details or pull the details back. So in that particular one, um, I think I had the full wall drawn, the, the just the fireplace drawn, uh, TV hanging over it, a painting hanging over sconces on the walls, whatever. And I can just click them on and off and show them what it is I have in mind. And I can do that as I sit there at their kitchen table. On the Remarkable Tablet. On the Remarkable Tablet. Yeah. yeah. So can I ask, oh. why did you choose, why did you purchase Remarkable as opposed to buying an iPad? What was the reasoning behind that? There, I think there are two, two primary reasons. One of them is um, an iPad is heavy and slick and the, and the contact between the pen or pencil point and the glass feels slippery. Yeah. Um, I don't care for that. I would rather feel the, the scraping and the tactile feel of, of, uh, lead on on paper. It feels just uh, like that, doesn't it? It feels just like that. Yeah. Uh, well, you can buy that kind of coating for an iPad because I have that as well. But you I didn't buy. But the remarkable, you use it just as a sketching tool, or do you take notes on it? Oh yeah, I take. I, if, well, here here was the weirdest part. So again, since we're talking about design in general and not necessarily just pretty pictures, um, 
I, I found myself, I find, I found that I had gone paperless before I was, before I knew I was going paperless. I literally was at a job site and somebody asked me for a pen and I realized I don't carry them anymore. And then it made me realize I don't carry paper anymore either. And it was the first time I recognized that only thing I carry is the remarkable tablet. It's my sketch pad. It's my notes. It's everything that I, that I have. It's, it's my ability to carry my plans with me. Um, so, you know, I bring them up as PDF documents on the iPad, I mean, on the Remarkable. So for me, it's a very, very simple tool that gives me uh, that very organic drawback, that, that take back to uh, the sketchbook. I mean, I still have the sketchbooks. I, you know, I still have them. They're here. But, right. um, but it's... Yeah. Uh, By the way, this, this was not meant to be a commercial for Remarkable. Uh, no, but, but it's... But, yeah. I know Kevin likes to use the remarkable and I used to have one. I, I sent it back because I, it just, uh, it wasn't me. Although I loved it. It was really amazing, but that was version one too. Now you have the new version, which has more features and does. It more. does. Um, so um, yeah. So pretty cool. So then, and, yeah. So then this gives me, it gives me a lot of freedom. I can then take my drawings from chief and I can, um, I can, port them over here and carry them with me. I can share them with other, with other people, but it doesn't matter if I'm uh, I, like they had this idea that they wanted a new front door. So, uh, you know, I just was working with that. Let me bring that up. So I was working with the idea of how to convert their home to give them the new front door there nice. and, and add something to that. And, and, you know, this took me all of about 30 seconds to, to draw and then they've they've got something to say yay or nay on and then we can move forward so i guess what i'm saying is is that um where i find my strength in this is in the process before the process um i love to I love to get the creative part in there then i can take this home and work all the way through the night if i want to 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 button up the details but that's just the way my head works not the way everyone's head works no. you got me sold kevin i think that i love the creativity and how organic it is and your clients are wowed when they're sitting there watching you do this they're like oh my god that is amazing oh, i i had one and dan knows this story but i had one that um i was the fifth i was the fifth contractor in at the time it had been invited into this project and usually when that happens it's you know it's a flip of a coin whether you have any chance at all right. but um, they immediately walked me in, started to walk me upstairs. And I said, if it's okay with you, I'd like to just sit here for a moment and say hi. And so they were kind of dumbfounded, but they did. And then I just asked them who they were and what they did and how's their life. And then they got kids at home and all of the answers to all those questions are building an image in my head so that when they tell me what they want, I understand what they're looking for. What are you trying to solve? What are, the, what are those issues? So by the time we got there and I said, all right, well, let's go take a look at the space. We went upstairs and they talked about, um, you know, that they get up at different times and they get the, their kids are uh, older and just about leaving home. And so the house is kind of private, but it's kind of not. But when they, you know, turn on the lights, then one of them is bothered and the other one's not. And, you know, now they can sleep in a little bit. And they went through all these different things. Well, while we were sitting in their master bath, I was just sitting on the tub asking questions, but I was putting all of their answers into my sketchbook in a drawing. And so when I finished with that drawing, I turned it around and said, is this your master bathroom? And they said, that's the master bathroom we want. And I was hired before I got to the front door. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so, you know, it, it comes in handy sometimes to, to just listen. I mean, to me, the, the biggest key to design is listening. And I just, I just I ask the questions and listen. So, Kevin, real quick, uh, we got a few questions here. What's your background? How did you get started in this? So you got to do the abbreviated version now. Yeah, the abbreviated version. So I've been doing it 21 years. Um, I was, I, uh, in my early childhood, I was very much interested in architecture and drafting. And then um, I ended up falling in love and ended all of that. So, uh, so I spent the next 20 years in business. And then when my business career flipped, I had to reinvent myself. And I went back to what I know how to do, which is to design and draw. And that's what took me back into it. So, um, so that, uh, that was, that's the very, very short version. So uh, my experience comes primarily from- Well, um, you're one of those, uh, I'll expand on it a little bit. You started pressure washing decks that evolved and that evolved into 
you becoming a contractor, right? Yeah. Yeah. I went from a, I went from a six figure income one day to knocking on doors, asking if people needed their decks cleaned the next day. So, um, I, I, uh, I spent a couple of years, um, you know, putting up, uh, cardboard signs and asking if people would like to have their decks cleaned and trying to reinvent myself. And, uh, it was through that contemplation that I started to figure out, turns out when you're spraying decks, you have a lot of time to contemplate. Yeah. <laughs> And I started contemplating on, you know, if I could spray decks, I could spray fences. You know, if I could spray fences, I could repair them. And if I could repair those, I could repair decks and fences. And the next thing I know, I started developing it into a business. So um, I went from there to, uh, and that was in the year 2001. I went from there to now where, um, well, the last home that we built was a, uh, um, we added 10,000 square feet to a 5,600 square foot house. So <laughs> a long ways from decks and fences. So yeah, wow. yeah. It's, been, it's, been, a, it's yeah. been a fun ride, but. Um, yeah, you've done some amazing things. Say on your, the remarkable, can you take that PDF of the chief drawing and then write on top of that? Yes, you can. Okay. So yeah. you, you could you basically, can... Robin could take her sketches and on remarkable, go ahead and do her, you know, sketching on that. Keeping in mind that it's keeping in mind it's a pencil and paper. You're talking black and white here. There's no no colors. No color, right? You, you can do shading, but you can't do you can't, can't do, other do colors. Things. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, and that part is wonderful. Um, they keep adding new features, so uh, the ability to layer was great. Um, that's helped me fantastically. But then also the ability to to overtype. Whether I, I mean I can sign contracts and change orders and all of that kind of thing on the remarkable, but I can also um, take my drawings and uh, notate things and show them to the subcontractors and say, this is where I need this. This is where I want that. And we're going to change this thing over here. Or I can um, uh, email them off to uh, the engineer or to whoever else that yeah. I need. Like I'll work out my, I'll work out some structural details and send them off to the engineer. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge Vicky here. Vicky, I, uh, you sketch like a five year and it's like, yeah, that would be me. I can draw stick figures all day long. Um, however, what I can do pretty effectively is if I have a something to start with, like a picture of a 3D room, I could sketch a fireplace on that pretty easily. Um, so I've worked with other designers before that get frustrated with Chief because it's a 3D modeling tool. And it's like, oh, God, I, you know, it takes so long to do that. Well, get the room in, get the windows in, get the things in that are easy to do, print that, and then start either sketching on the print or... You know, as Kevin's case, you could bring it into a, a, a remarkable or an iPad or something and just sketch on top of that. Absolutely. So there's there are ways to make that work uh, uh, to help you with that design process. But Vicky, um, if you want to learn how to draw, if you want to learn how to draw, honestly, just start drawing every day. And for you to understand perspective, find a picture you like and just start tracing over it. Because yeah. you know, I tell my students all the time, find a room and trace the lines. Don't go into the details, but just start getting the lines and you'll start understanding perspectives. Yep. Um, but draw, <clears throat> we spend so much time on our phones looking at junk, spend 10 minutes a day um, drawing. And I promise you, find a really nice little notebook that you like the feel of the paper, find a really nice pen that you like and draw. Don't use a pencil, don't erase. Just draw with a pen, a nice Probably. pen that you like, and that way you're not feeling like it's an art project. You don't like yeah. it, change the page yeah. and just keep on drawing. And if, you will improve your skills impre incredibly. And if I can offer something else, tools yeah, like please. this, tools like this, whether it's remarkable or something else, uh, this is a template that there, there's a zillion templates that you can use as your background. I'm having a hard time getting my, there we go. Um, that you can use as your background and uh this particular template is called perspective so you can use the the template as the background to help the people that have a hard time drawing a straight line get an idea of how you draw perspective so with a with a very small education on how to draw perspective you can end up creating a corner of a building and and, uh, and create something right there on this template yeah. then the background goes away and what you're left with is looking like a genius it so, you look amazing it's amazing how you look right but Kevin, I am so sure your clients are just like as you're drawing, they are in they are in awe. Well, I hope so. That's the goal. 
but, that's it. That's the goal. They love clients love the to see that artistry, you know, it, especially when you're in that higher end range, when you can start sketching like that. Fabulous. Beautifully done. Beautifully done, Kevin. I'm really impressed. Oh, thank you. Here's so, a kind of here's some of the things that Kevin does. Um, you do some cool things. You, you, you've got, you've got the mindset that, uh, sky's the limit. There's no limitations. Uh, let's think outside every box <clears throat> while you think inside the box. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even see the box. Yeah. You don't have a box. I yeah, love that's it. true. Yeah. <laughs> Good I, point. I, I, yeah. There's uh, some of the guys that I work with are just going, what goes on in there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of a scary place to live. <laughs> yeah, but you have fun with it and you do some really cool things. And, and uh, let's see, let's go to your. Uh, you yeah, can see you've done some sitting. nice. Oh, here's your deck that you're sitting that's on. What, that's where I'm sitting right now. Yeah, you're right on that table, aren't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> nice. This is, everybody should have one of these in their backyard. So, uh, guys, thanks for, uh, Kevin, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Robert was saying here, this was the most interesting show ever. Thank you. Hey, great. Okay, okay. thank you. And, uh, Robin, I'm probably not as bad as I make it out to be, and I do understand perspective, but I doubt I'd be hired on the spot based on my sketches. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I think that's probably true for most of us. I, Kevin, you have told me a few stories about being hired on the spot. Um, <laughs> they're pretty fascinating. Uh, the one that the one that always gets me is the one where she pulled out her checkbook and wrote you a small check uh, okay. on the spot. For she just she just said she said, "Okay, I really like this, and I would like you to get started on it. I'm going to be gone next week." And I said, "Well, I'm." committed for a while i you know i've got some projects going on ahead of this but uh and she said if i write you a check for fifty thousand dollars will that get you started <laughs> <laughs> and she, she wrote a check for fifty thousand dollars and slid it across the table and i walked out the door thinking so weird i met her less than an hour ago i don't have a contract we have no agreement in place but i have a check from her for fifty thousand dollars written up <laughs> to me <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool uh, let's see. Robert says, can we have uh, solving complex puzzle problem plumbing ideas like have inputs solved? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're saying there, Robert. You want to clarify yeah. a little better? Uh, Amy says, hey, Amy hey, says hey. she just ordered a remarkable. Okay, well, I guess we should have made this a remarkable commercial, but never thought about that. Yeah, by um, the way, if you had used my, um, if you had used my, uh, my link, then uh, you would have saved forty dollars, and I would have gotten forty dollars. So, oops! Oh, really? <laughs> Dan, you got to put it on the website. Well, I never even thought. I, you know, when I invited Kevin, it didn't even dawn on me. I know he uses Remarkable. You've been using it. Yeah, you know, I think I introduced you to Remarkable back in the day, um, or maybe you had it before. I don't remember, but we both had one at the same time, and uh, uh, never thought about it. So, I guess we'll have to put that in the show notes. So yeah. send, send me your link, Kevin, and I'll put it in the show notes. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, maybe you can make That's a couple cool. bucks. So cool. Hey, guys, really? thanks again. Um, uh, yeah, Amzi, it'll be great to uh, to uh, hear back from you about how you like your Remarkable. Maybe yes. we'll get you on the show here. Uh, one more question, John. How did you get the reference layers to show up? Um, John, you want to explain that real quick? Oh, your mic, you're muted. There you go. All right, let me share my screen again. All right, go ahead. We're going to run over a minute here, but yep. get into it in a second. Kevin, you can stay uh, on for a minute after we're done here, too. Sure. Bring back up my plan here. You just go to uh, up here to your layer. I'm not, we're not seeing the right screen, John. Uh, you got to switch. Why don't you, you just do it, Dan? You, <clears throat> okay. show them, you, know, you uh, seem to show them a more than. So go to your layers um, and go to, you got to find the set called reference, reference display set. 
this is the layer set that when you hit that reference display button, it shows this stuff. All right. And what did we look for? Um, what was it we were trying to do? Uh, we were trying box. to do the space planning. Space Get the space planning, planning to show. Um, there they are. So yeah. you could turn on your space planning boxes right here to display when you hit the reference display. And that's all there is to it. And so then make again, sure you go back go back to your plan set, your save plan view that you're using. Yeah, and then switch back to what you were working on. That's it. Yep. Cool. Okay. All right, you guys. Uh, we'll call great. it a day here. Thank and you, everybody. Everybody on call, thanks for being here. Let us know if you have any questions. Yeah, we'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.